Welcome to the first video in this video series on Robotics 101. In this video, we are going to be talking about coordinate transformations. We are going to focus on coordinate transformations for the case of 2D robots, also known as planar serial rings, simply because they are easier to understand. And after a few videos, when we get a grip on it, we are going to move to the 3D case. Starting with the definition, coordinate transformation is the changing of the coordinate system. I personally don't like this definition. So let me define it another way. I can say that coordinate transformation is taking a point which is defined in one coordinate system and defining it with respect to another coordinate system. To me, this just makes a lot more sense. Now, before we dive into the mathematics of coordinate transformations, I want you to understand why do we need to use coordinate transformation in robotics and how we are going to use it later on. Let me draw out the robot real quick. This robot has two rings and an end effector. End effector is anything which is at the end of the robot, which can be either a gripper or a camera. And so let's say there is an object placed in a room and this robot has to go and grab that object. Many times the robot has a camera at the end effector, so it knows where the object is with respect to the end effector. So I make a moving frame or M at the end effector and I know the position of the object with respect to the end effector. So I mark this as small x. And then I make another coordinate system at the base of the robot. I call this as the fixed frame or F. Often I know the small x which is the position of the object with respect to the moving frame and I need to find the big x which is the position of the same object with respect to the fixed frame. This comes in handy when I have a moving robot which has a camera at the end effector. So I know where the object is with respect to the camera and then I can express the same object with respect to the base of the robot. Or in case of a stationary robot, such as a moving arm, which is moving about in a room. So more often than not, I would know the position of the object with respect to the base of the robot. So taking the position of the object with respect to the base of the robot, I can then express the object with respect to the end effector. Now coming to coordinate transformations. There are three main possibilities of expressing the moving frame, which is the M with respect to the fixed frame or F. The first is there is just pure translation of the moving frame with respect to the fixed frame. The second is there is just pure rotation of the moving frame with respect to the fixed frame. And the third is there is a combination of both a translation as well as a rotation of the moving frame with respect to the fixed frame. Starting with pure translation. So in pure translation, the moving frame just moves from one point to another with respect to the fixed frame and its orientation does not change. I am drawing the fixed frame in pink and the moving frame in white. You notice that I can simply move from the fixed frame to the moving frame by displacing the fixed frame by a vector d. I have a point which is defined with respect to the moving frame as a small x and now I have to find the coordinates of the same point with respect to the fixed frame, which I have marked as capital X in red. So how do I go about it? I can simply do the vector summation. So by just by looking at this diagram, I can see that the big X would be equal to the small X plus the D. Notice that all of these are vectors. Here the D vector is the coordinates of the origin of the moving frame with respect to the fixed frame. The small X is the point defined in the moving frame. And the big X is the same point defined with respect to the fixed frame. Let's solidify our understanding of this by using an example. So let me draw out the fixed frame in pink and the moving frame in white. And let's say the coordinates of the origin of the moving frame are one unit in X and four units in Y when expressed with respect to the fixed frame. This is the same as the D vector and the small x which is the coordinates of the point with respect to the moving frame is two units in positive x and one unit in negative y with respect to the moving frame. And I need to find the coordinates of the same point with respect to the fixed frame which is the big x. 
So just by having a look at this diagram, I can see that the big X is going to be three units in positive X and three units in positive Y. I can also get the same result by using the formula that we have just discussed, which is big X equals small x plus d. And by using the formula, I get the same result. Hence, we just verify that our formula is correct. Now moving to the second type of coordinate transformation, which is pure rotation. In pure rotation, the moving frame just gets rotated with respect to the fixed frame and there is no translation of the moving frame involved. Let me draw out the fixed frame in pink and the moving frame in white. Notice that since it is a pure rotation, the fixed frame and the moving frame origins coincide. In this, the moving frame is just a rotation of the fixed frame by an angle theta in the anti-clockwise direction. Now I have a point which is defined with respect to the moving frame. I have marked it as small x and I have the same point which is defined with respect to the fixed frame. I mark it as big X. So now I need to go from the small x to the big x. How do I go about it? Now let me define a point on the x-axis of the moving frame as 1, 0. So by using simple geometry, I can see that the same point when defined with respect to the fixed frame would give me cosine of theta and sine of theta. Similarly, by defining a point on the y-axis of the moving frame as 0, 1. And again, by using simple geometry, I can see that the same point when expressed in the fixed frame gives me negative sine of theta and cosine of theta. At this point, I would encourage you to pause this video for a few seconds and make sure that you understand how I am going from one frame to another. For the case of pure rotation, whenever I need to go from coordinates given in the moving frame to the coordinates given in the fixed frame, I just need to multiply the coordinates in the moving frame by a matrix A, which is the rotation matrix also called an orientation matrix and for the 2D case it is a 2 cross 2 matrix. Now let us drive the rotation matrix. Using the relationship we discussed above, if I have a coordinate 1, 0 in the moving frame, it gives me cosine of theta and sine of theta in the fixed frame. So using this relationship I can see that the two elements of the rotation matrix are going to be cosine of theta and sine of theta. Similarly, using the other point, if I have the point 0, 1 in the moving frame, I know it is going to give me a negative sine of theta and a cosine of theta in the fixed frame. So using this relationship, I can figure out the next two elements of the rotation matrix, which comes out to be negative sine of theta and cosine of theta. Hence, I am able to construct the rotation matrix, which is cosine of theta, sine of theta, negative sine of theta and cosine of theta. So for the case of pure rotation, the big X is equal to the rotation matrix times the small x, where the rotation matrix has only one variable, which is theta, where theta is the rotation angle or the angle between the fixed frame and the moving frame. That brings us to the end of this first part on coordinate transformations. If you found this video useful, do subscribe and see you in part two of coordinate transformations.